All right, we have here a high standard HD military pistol. Now, High Standard was a company that was in business uh, from, I think, somewhere in the 1930s, and they stopped producing their line of uh, pistols in 2018. Uh, they were very popular. Uh, this is the second one that I've owned. I have a um, Sport King, which is a civilian model. But High Standard made a series of pistols that the United States government during World War II bought in quantity to use uh, for firearms training. There were a lot of 22 rifles and pistols used to train troops during the war, and high standard pistols were one of them. It was a Model B and a Model HD that the U.S. government bought. The Model HD military was what they kind of renamed the gun or the model that was made after the war or at the very end of the war because uh, these were made from 1945 to 1950 and there were 150,000 of these produced, the HD military. Uh, I believe the guns the government bought will have U.S. property stamped on them somewhere. That's one way of telling the difference. The government did buy some of these HD militaries, but not as many as they bought for training. They were actually bought by the uh, CIA, and the guns were converted uh, with suppressors. They were made that way, uh, to where they had a screw-on suppressor. If you go online, you can find a photo of it. And there was a handful of these guns that... Uh, Covert military units purchased, suppressed this model. And where it was made famous is it was in a survival kit of Gary Powers, whose spy plane was shot down over Russia in 1960. And that pistol is still on display at the KGB headquarters where he was interrogated to this day. <clears throat> so let's take a look at the gun. Now, where you got the uh, Model HD is, I believe, was Model B, Model D, but the H is for the fact this gun is hammer-fired. Many of the later models have an internal striker-fired system. All right, and these guns were made in two barrel lengths, four and a half and six and three-quarters inches. This is probably a four and a half. And it is a bull barrel. You'll find some with a thinner, this section here would be a lot thinner barrel. I've seen several examples of that. Uh, these barrels do not interchange or are quick release like some of the later models of high standards. These are fixed barrels. The other difference here is... Um, This model has a hold open. When the last shot is fired, the slide will hold open, where later models do not have that feature. Okay, so what controls you have? And also, the magazine's different. We'll talk about that in a minute. So what the controls are. This little button here is the... Uh, you pull that back and it's spring-loaded, trying to depress that to release the slide. doesn't quite work, but you pull it back, that's the slide hold open. You could probably use that getting it back, get my hand over, and then manually pushing it up. And then once you pull back, it'll drop down. It's got a spring on there. This other little lever is used for the takedown. Uh, I'm not going to get into that, but that's what that lever there is for. And on later models, you will not find this here, especially the ones where you can pull the barrel off. This isn't necessary. On this side, we have a manual safety, which is a switch here. It goes up much like the uh, 1911. You have your exposed hammer, which you have to be careful that the hammer doesn't bite you when you shoot this pistol. 
It has adjustable rear sight up on here, which is kind of unusual. It's the older style. You can adjust it for windage, I guess, and elevation. Uh, later models have a much simpler sight and a fixed sight, which is integral to the barrel, not adjustable. Now the magazine, and they do differ. Let me go get the other one. The magazine on these older models, if you look at it, uh, is a little bit different than the one that I got for my Sport King that was made in 1954. They have this like spring-loaded lips on there or whatever that is where the Sport King doesn't. Close-up look of it. Uh, and these don't quite fit in the later models and this magazine I had difficulty working with uh, the pistol and I don't know I believe the different models use different magazines. Uh, I have two that came with that pistol that was my great uncle's made in uh, 1954. This came with the gun from 1947. It's kind of worn out. And I was looking to get another magazine replacement. And uh, I think I can find the right model. There's three different models. And they're like $60 a piece for an aftermarket mag. But another thing that's interesting, if you look at this magazine, it has like that rounded thing on the back. An indentation. Where the newer one does not. So there is a difference in these older models, magazines. And... Uh, the newer ones. Here's a groove there, which is not in this. This is just like a solid plate spot welded on. This here is more stamped. And the bottoms are a little bit different in their configuration. So that's something I'm going to have to do more research on. Uh, and also taking this gun apart is a little bit more complicated. There's a couple videos out there. Since the ones where you can remove the barrel, the slide just slides off the front, the striker fired ones. Uh, this doesn't do that, so it's a little bit different. It's a pretty well made gun. I mean, it's all steel. This one has been used over the years, so it's got some wear on the finish, heavy bull barrel, and that. So, it's an interesting pistol from a bygone era. Alright, I hope you liked the video, and we'll compare it, and get my other high standard out, and we'll take them out to the range and shoot them. These guns are a pleasure to shoot, and very accurate.